Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the subsidiary or the sub stock sale to non-affiliates. This topic is covered in advanced accounting. Just to give you the big picture, we have a parent sub relationship. And what we are assuming here is the sub is issuing more shares, issuing more stocks. And those stocks are sold to a third party that's not affiliate. So it's not it's not sold to the parent company, it's sold to a th third party. Now, why would the sub do so? Why would the sub issue new shares? Well, they want to raise capital for expansion. The sub wants to expand into new, into new territory, into a new product. Well, that's what would happen. You will need to sell stocks. Or sometime you are operating in a foreign country where local ownership is mandatory. Well, what you have to do is you have to issue additional shares. It doesn't matter. The point is you are issuing more shares. When this happened, a non-operation increase or decrease occur in the fair value and the book value of the sub. As a result of this transaction, the value of the sub might go up, the value of the sub might go down, their book value as well as their fair value. Now, this change not reflected yet in the parent investment because the parent has an investment because there's a parent sub, sub relationship. And as a result, the parent percentage ownership as well as the NCI might increase or decrease. What we have to do, we have to maintain a reciprocity between the sub equity and the investment parent balance because what you did when you purchased the sub, you purchased their equity. Now what's happening, the sub equity is changing and now your investment that's sitting on the parent company is not reflecting that. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to prepare consolidation entries to show the changes in NCI and equity balance of the sub so everything still kind of balances. And what happened as a result, shareholders are assigned a pro rata of the difference. Now that pro rata could be an increase in the value of the shareholders or a decrease. In this session, we'll work an example where we have an increase in the, share, uh, in the shareholders value. What we have to do basically, what we have to understand is that the book value of the sub that's held by the parent company will change. That's what you have to know. As a result, we have to adjust the carrying value of the investment in the sub and the change will be done in additional paid in capital, whether that's an increase or a decrease in investment. Now, I went through all of this and this may not make any sense or it may, it may make little bit of sense. The best way is to illustrate this in an example. But to summarize, what we're trying to do is the sub is issuing more shares. Now, the sub can issue more shares. Also, the sub can buy back some of their shares. In this example, I'm going to say we're going to issue shares. And as a result of this issuance, the book value and the fair value of the sub will change. As a result, we have to make an adjustment on the parent company because as a result of issuing new shares, think about it. If there are 100,000 shares and now the sub issued an additional 50 shares, well, what happened is the parent percentage will change as well as the NCI will change. Or let's assume not 50, let's assume only 10,000 10, shares. Now, the, 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 percentage will, the percentages will change. Let's go ahead and take a look at a comprehensive example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Starting with this example, we're going to assume that we have a sub with the 75,000 shares, $1 par value, common stock is 75,000. Additional paid in capital is 210,000 and retained earnings is 255. Total equity, total book value of equity is 540,000. Here comes the parent company and the parent company wants to buy 60 of the 75,000 shares. Well, let's think about it for a moment. 60 out of the 75,000 is 80%. Therefore, the parent company wants to buy 80% of this company. 80% paying 480,000. Now we have to find out what's the total value of this sub. 
Well, the total value is 600,000 because if we are paying 480,000 to buy 80%, it means the full value of the company is 600,000. Now we have to find out since we paid six, since we valued the company at 600,000, there's a difference between the fair value and the book value. And let's find out how much is the difference. Obviously, it's 60. Let's compute the difference and assign it to an asset because this is the access fair value. So we're going to pay consideration transferred by the parent 480,000. The non controlling interest is 600,000. If the parent gets 480, the fair value of NCI is 120. So the total value of the company is 600,000. Now the book value of the company is 540. The difference is 60,000. And we're gonna assign this difference to an asset called an intangible asset called customer list. And we're gonna amortize this customer list over a 10 year period. So what we did is we find the access fair value and we determine where are we going to list this. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to start to see how are we going to prepare consolidation for this company. The subnet income for year 20x0 at the end of the year is $50,000. Now let's prepare the consolidation worksheet for the 20x0. So how do we prepare the consolidation worksheet? The first thing we have to do is we have to eliminate the sub equity account, right? Because that's the first step. Well, let's do that. We're going to debit the common stock of the sub. 75,000, which is to eliminate this account, debit additional paid in capital 210 to eliminate this account, debit retained earning 255. Now, in reciprocity, we're going to have to credit the investment account 80% of this balance. So we're going to take this balance, which is 540,000 times 80%, that's 732. And we're going to take this balance, 540,000, multiplied by 20% to establish the NCI 108. Now, what else do we have to do? Remember, we have 60,000 hanging. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to recognize this access uh, acquisition fair value, okay, which is how much? 60,000. Therefore, we debit customer list 60,000 because we bought the company. Now we have to add this new asset new asset to the consolidation to the consolidated financial statement therefore we debit the new asset we credit investment in sub 48 and credit nci 48. now bear in mind i did not show you the, the original journal entry basically when we purchased the company at, at this point i assume you know it it's going to be investment in sub 480 and we're going to assume we paid cash credit cash 480. I mean, I did not do this entry because at this point, if you are looking at this lecture, you're way advanced. So, you know, there's an investment in sub of 480. We're eliminating this investment as we are doing the consolidation. Now, since we have this new, new asset 60,000, we are going to have to have access amortization. So we have to recognize amortization of 6,000 because we're going to amortize the 60,000 over 10 years. Then at the end, we have to eliminate the parent equity in sub, the earning in sub, which is how much? The sub earned 50,000. The excess amortization is, is uh, 6,000. Therefore, what we're left is 44. We own 80%, which is 35,200. Remember, at some point, because we're using the equity method, we increased, we increased the investment by this much when we consolidate we have to reduce it so therefore let's look at the investment in sub what happened to the investment in sub first we made the purchase 480,000 when we purchased the sub that's how much how much we paid then we increased net income remember we have net income and this is 35,200 I just had it here which is 50 minus 6,044 times 80%. This is what's gave us the 35,200. Now, remember, when we started the consolidation, first we removed 432,000. This is from the prior slide. Kind of just show you what we did here. So this way you don't. Uh, so this is the 42. Now we are crediting. We are, let me put it in a different color. We are crediting the investment to remove it in the consolidation process. We're going to credit the investment first, uh, 432. Credit the investment again, 48,000 when we put the new asset which is the customer list, then remove again, credit the investment 335,200. Now what, what that did, what that did brought the investment down to zero because we have to re remove the investment. Now bear in mind, the parent, the parent by itself, the parent, 
they still have on its own on its own on its own financial statements they still have the investment in the sub all what i showed you here is the consolidation so the investment is zero as a consolidation but the sub let me go back here and this is zero the parent will have its own investment and the value let me let me just kind of they will they would still have 480 plus 35 200 so i just want to make sure because we have to keep track of the investment account it help us in our it help us in our in our understanding so if we take 480000 plus 35 200 the sub uh, the parent not the sub the parent has an investment value of 515 200 we assume there is no dividend in this example to keep it again to keep it simple to keep it simple so so far the investment this is on the parent books we still have that now january 1st 20x1 which is at the beginning of the following year the sub issued an additional twenty five thousand shares to outside parties so the parent did not buy any of this okay one dollar par value and they sold each share for ten dollars let's journalize the entry we're going to debit cash 250 credit common stock twenty five thousand shares times a dollar and the remainder is additional paid in capital so i showed you the entry because i want to show you the sub equity before the issuance of stock and the sub equity after after we issue the stock the common stock went up by twenty five thousand this account went up by two hundred and twenty five thousand which is right here and retained earnings remember we had the sub had fifty thousand in net income it went from 255 to 305 this is the sub the sub books so notice there was change in the sub book value there is change in the sub book value now let's take a look at the sub valuation as of one one the new valuation of the sub here's what's going to happen we paid them 480 the nci was 120 remember the sub income minus amortization is 44 adjust value 120 x1 is 644 then the sub issued an additional 25 250,000 in cash now the sub is valued at 894,000 that's the sub value bear in mind that we issued new shares because remember we owned as a parent company 60,000 shares when they had 60,000 when they had 60,000 of, of of 75 now we still have 60,000 but now the outstanding shares are 100,000 the parent becomes a 60% owner of this company the ownership changes from 80 to 60% now we have to change our it we have to change our investment in a sense we have to change how much is reflected in the investment against their equity against their book equity ah well let's take a look at this now we own 60 percent if we take 894 times 60 percent the parent post acquisition ownership is 536 400 now what we're saying is our investment should if, if we own 60 percent of this company at fair value our investment should be 536 400 well what is our investment account our investment which is 5 12, 5 15 200 where did that number came from 5 15 200 let me go back here remember i told you to keep track of the in parent investment 5 12 200 this is where this number came from so now we need to make an adjustment what happened is our investment went up you might be saying hold on a second why did your investment go up i mean you did not do anything you basically kind of in a sense your investment went up well here's what happened because the sub sold shares at more at a price that's higher than what we initially purchased the shares at when they purchased it when they sold the shares at ten dollars the new sale well it means the stock price is ten dollars when we purchased those shares we purchased them less than ten dollars well you could do the you, you could do the computation but it was less than ten dollars as a result we're going to enjoy this increase in value therefore the the increase in value should be twenty one thousand two hundred which is five thirty six four hundred compared to five fifteen two hundred now you're saying okay how do we enjoy in quote enjoy this increase in value we don't book a gain we don't book a loss so we don't say we're going to debit investment and credit gain for this much or credit any sort of oci what's going to happen we're going to consider this as additional capital so we're going to debit investment in sub we're going to increase our sub value 
by 21,200. And remember, no gain, no loss. We increase the equity, 21,200. Therefore, now what happened is to our investment in sub, we started at 48, net income was 35,200. And at the beginning of the year, we enjoy an increase in the sub. Therefore, our value in the sub starting 1120 x1 is 536400 so make an, make a note of this number because we need it because i want to keep track of the investment and the sub now in subsequent years which is in 20x1 we're going to back to normal consolidation so let's go back to our normal consolidation let's assume in 20x1 at the end of the year we earned $80,000 in, in net income prepare the consolidation entries well this is our equity at the beginning of the year remember we increased our common stock we increased our paid in capital again we're going to have to do the same thing we're going to have to eliminate the equity accounts against the investment let's do that debit common stock 100,000 debit additional paid in capital debit retained earnings done 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 credit investment in sub now our investment in sub is only 60 percent therefore we credit investment in sub five five oh four now you know, make a note of this because you're going to be crediting the investment in the account. And you credit NCI and sub 40%, 336. Now, the sub ownership went up. The sub used to be only, I'm sorry, the NCI share used to be 20. Now it's 40%. We also have to recognize the access, uh, the access uh, acquisition date fair value assigned to a customer list. Now we only debit 54 because the prior year we debited 60, then we amortize 6. Now we only have 54. Now we're going to amortize another six this year. So we debit customer list 54,000 to add it to the, to, to add this asset, credit the investment again in sub 60% of that. Again, the NCI now has a 40% share. Once again, we're going to amortize 6,000 of the customer list and we're going to eliminate the parent equity in sub, which the net income was 80,000 minus 6,000 in the excess amortization, which will give us 74 times 60%, will give us at 44,400. Let's go back and do the, uh, do the uh, go through the investment in the sub account. Remember we had the, now the, the balance was 536,400 as of 1120 X1. Then we added net income of 44,400. Remember the company had net income of 44,400. This is net income for 20X1. Then during the consolidation, we credited the account 504 against the equity of sub. Equity of sub. Again, this is on the prior slide. And we credited the account 32,400 when we added that new asset, the customer list. Then we have to remove the investment in sub against the earnings, which is 44,400. If you add those up, again, the investment together, the investment will go away if we add them up. Now, bear in mind, bear in mind, on the parent company, we still have investment in sub by itself, 536,400 plus 44,400. Whatever that number is will be our investment separately. But in the consolidation, the investment account will be eliminated. Now, this topic in this situation, I work an example where we sold the sub sold additional shares and we enjoy a gain. That doesn't have to be always the case. We could have many other scenarios where the sub sells additional shares and as a result, the value goes down. We could have a scenario where the sub sold to the parent company some shares. Like they meant, for example, if they sold an additional uh, 25,000 shares, they will sell 80% of them to the parent company and the parent company will maintain its capital. We could also have the scenario where the sub buys back its own shares. So I don't want you to think this is the only scenario that you could have. You could have many scenarios, you could have gains, you could have losses, you could have no change because if, you, if the parent company purchase 80% of the new issue shares, they're going to keep the same ownership level. Anyhow, what should you do? To learn about this topic further, go to farhatlectures.com, invest in your education. This is an advanced accounting topic. Your career is important. You may never see this in your lifetime, but you want to pass your accounting course, you want to pass your CPA exam, go to Farhat, invest in yourself, work multiple choice, good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.